we cannot allow uh, individuals to go around senselessly killing individuals. New at 11, could their son's murder have been prevented? Tragic losses like theirs leading to calls for change in the juvenile justice system. Families left shattered by the actions of violent repeat offenders. Second chances with deadly outcomes. Juvenile offenders once spared adult court arrested again for murder. Are looser state laws in L.A. County's policies just too lenient? Or do they offer hope for real rehabilitation? Well, tonight we dive into the decisions and their impact on local families. Here's KCAL News anchor Susie Sell. He was my third heartbeat, my third born. Karen and Eric Ruffins of Carson hold on to the memory of their son. The love of my life. 28-year-old Eric Ruffins Jr., a dad, was killed in January. Since then, so many. Did you know him? Questions. What could have caused? What anger? Perhaps the most troubling one. What if one of the men charged with murder in their son's case hadn't been released after his first murder conviction? So where are we now? Because my son's dead. Detectives say Ruffins was driving four people in his car when someone in the back seat shot him. They left him in the car. I saw my son. On the, under the sheet. 28-year-old Dwayne Cathy and 22-year-old Damani Lee were charged with murder for the killing of Ruffins. For Lee, it's not the first time. I haven't gotten closure from anything yet. The first time was Michelle Brace's boyfriend of 22 years. I, I'll never, I'll never be with anybody else. John Rue, a cashier in Lancaster, was shot during a robbery. Deonta Johnson and 16-year-old Lee, who provided the gun, were convicted of murder. Lee was set to be tried as an adult. Brace pushed for it. He would be in life without parole right now. When George Gascon became L.A. County D.A. in 2020, he banned prosecuting juveniles as adults, even for murder. This directive pulled 77 cases, including Lee's, from adult court, keeping them in the juvenile system. About a year later, Gascon revised his policy to say in the most egregious cases, transfers to adult court would be allowed. But by then, Lee had already been ordered to stay in the juvenile system till he aged out at 25. Brace forgave Lee. I felt bad for him. I really did. And it looked like rehabilitation was working. He was called a role model. Last summer, after serving less than six years, Lee was transferred to a halfway house. Working part time, was getting an education. Go ahead, we'll see what happens. Seven months later, Lee's arrest for the murder of Ruffins. It's mind blowing to know that uh, an individual can get out mm -hmm. after so called being rehabilitated in such a short period of time. For the Ruffins family, look, I mean, it's horrible. And my heart aches for the family. Most of what we're doing is working. We have substantial failures. Mr. Ruffins is a tragic failure of a system. But Gascon doubts a judge would have approved Lee's transfer to adult court, citing the court's focus on the teen's maturity, crime severity, and past behavior. He had no prior significant history. Prop 57, passed four years before Gascon took office, changed how juveniles are tried. Prosecutors can recommend adult court, but judges decide. And a recent change limits transfers to 16 and 17 year olds with the presumption they stay in juvenile court. The court has to be convinced that the juvenile cannot be rehabilitated. In 2022, less than 27% of 45 statewide transfer hearings resulted in adult court. Since Gascon's policy shift, his office recommended 20 for transfer. Of the four cases in court so far, one was approved and two denied, including the case of Unique Atkins and Sierra Brown. In 2018, the sisters were found beaten, shot, burned in their Westchester apartment. Atkins' then 17-year-old ex-boyfriend arrested for the murders. We tried to transfer that case and the court denied the transfer. Donato Cruikshank, convicted of double murder last year, 
is close now to his final year in juvenile hall. We also know that juveniles are very easily programmable and, and we have many success stories. A 17-year-old Monty McKay was almost certain he was going to adult prison. He faced 48 years to life for the night he drove friends in a friend's car. At a light, he spotted a police cruiser. The sirens go off. Go, go, go. And it was like, like everybody in the car is screaming right now. Driving over 100 miles per hour when I hit the curb. Then the car flew in the air, hit a break wall. In that moment, McKay's painful life of foster homes, sibling separation, and jail time no longer mattered. A woman walking along a path was hit and killed. The cop's body has their gun out. I'm like, I'm, I'm like begging him, please kill me. But it's my fault. Of course it is. Just like Lee's case, McKay stayed in the juvenile system when Gascon began his term. He served three years for second-degree murder. My entire life changed. I could finally plan for a future. And this once high school dropout just finished his first year at UC Berkeley. I think everyone deserves a second chance. Rehabilitation is key to any success story and is also a factor in transfer hearings. However, LA County Probation tells KCAL News, real rehabilitation efforts are virtually non-existent due to rampant violence and staff shortages. As a result, many of these kids leave the system only to return to the gangs that brought them there in the first place. Do we go back to doing the things that we know that clearly do not work on a wholesale basis in order to feel better? The answer is how do we figure out how to do it better? I want laws to be changed. I want laws to be looked at a little bit different. The message has to get out there that we cannot allow uh, individuals to go around senselessly killing individuals. Won't you know, Eric, we love you. And no, they're not gonna forget you, son. This is his voice. We will not, cannot allow his name to go in vain. Susie Saw, KCAL News. Well, these heartbroken families are not alone. As we reported earlier tonight, Shawnee's Dyer, who was found guilty of murder at the age of 17 in 2019, was released after serving less than four years in prison. And she was recently arrested and charged with murder again. And the two men charged in the case of Eric Ruffins Jr. have not entered a plea yet.